Hello! If you find, found this, you... <laughs> Can we just talk about the crab cycle? <laughs> Hi, it's Helen from Precision Nutrition and today in this video I'm going to discuss intermittent fasting uh, specifically in women and how they respond differently than men in some cases and based on what we know if you should try it as a woman. Intermittent fasting is when you don't eat for a period of time and then you have a window of when you do eat. So like 16, 8. Um, where you, you don't eat for 16 hours and then you eat for 8 or you don't eat for a whole day, for a whole 24 hours. Um, most people try intermittent fasting when they're trying to lose weight or lose body fat. It does work in, in those cases in that people are actually eating less calories so there is, is weight loss. Other benefits, possible health benefits are uh, improved blood lipids, so decreased triglyceride levels and uh, decrease blood glucose levels and there's also some evidence that it could reduce your risk of cancer and coronary disease. Uh, so can women do intermittent fasting? Well kind of, yes and no. Um, women can do it but there's more nuance for women and, and they're more sensitive to uh, intermittent fasting than men. That's what we've seen in, at Precision Nutrition and but the research, the clinical research hasn't caught up yet. Why are women different than men and why would they respond differently to intermittent fasting? Well it comes down to the uh, hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, the HPG axis, and both men and women have this axis. With, with women it's slightly different so we're just going to focus on that. So the hypothalamus um, secretes this uh, hormone called the gonadotropin releasing hormone and actually impulses. And that then tells the pituitary gland to either release luteinizing hormone LH or a follicular stimulating hormone FSH. And so LH and FSH then go on to stimulate the ovaries in women to produce either uh, progesterone or estrogen. And then that feeds back to the hypothalamus and says, okay, well, we're, we're good. And that leads to the cycling that women uh, have the menstrual cycle. But with women, they have more of this neuron called uh, kispeptin, this kispeptin neuron. And that neuron is in the hypothalamus as well. And it detects calories. And when there isn't enough calories around, the neuron produces more kispeptin and tells the, the other part of the hypothalamus that produces uh, gonadotropin releasing hormone just not to. It's like we can't get pregnant now because bad stuff will happen and if when women get pregnant and so their fertility is tied to, to pregnancy and then that's tied to taking care of a baby which needs that they need more calories but with men fertility is doesn't require more calories so that's why women are more sensitive to caloric restriction and that's what intermittent fasting is is ultimately caloric restriction and this mechanism is a safety so that you don't um, end up getting pregnant where there isn't calories around for you. Many of you might be thinking that not having a menstrual cycle sounds fantastic. There's no periods and you're not that interested about your fertility. But estrogen and progesterone have implications outside of just fertility and your menstrual cycle. What they do, and if anybody is nearing menopause can tell you, is that Estrogen specifically decreases your appetite. Estrogen helps with your, your ability to sleep, uh, your ability to recover from exercise, uh, your digestion, as well as your mood. So outside of uh, menstrual cycle and your period, there's huge implications for not having a, um, a production of estrogen and progesterone. So there's some people that, or some women, that really shouldn't do intermittent fasting. Uh, those include teenage girls, uh, pregnant women, women who are also breastfeeding, women who are highly stressed, and you could argue that at this point most women are highly stressed, or um, have, if you have a history of uh, eating disorder where intermittent fasting tends to trigger uh, binge eating or um, this, this idea that, that eating, if you're not eating for, for 16 hours and maybe not eating for 18 hours and it becomes progressively more aggressive. So eating disorders, uh, we find are not a good fit for intermittent fasting. On the flip side of which women would actually could benefit from intermittent fasting, 
Women with uh, PCOS, uh, polycystic ovary syndrome, may find that their symptoms improve depending on the type. Uh, with intermittent fasting, again, they would want to talk to the healthcare professional about if it's a good fit for them. Or if, you know, you're actually it's really stressful to try to eat at, at certain times. So maybe you have, you're have trying to get everybody out the door in the morning and it's just easier for you not to eat um, breakfast and then to eat uh, your, a bigger lunch. In those cases, it actually could be beneficial. So if you really want to try intermittent fasting, you know, experiment. Uh, and the experiment is, there's two parts to it. One is you want to do something different than you've done before. And the second part is you want to make sure you're tracking how, how you're feeling and how things are changing. So, and start really like subtly, maybe not eat breakfast or eat breakfast a bit later or maybe have supper a bit earlier in the night and then track how that makes you feel and and don't change you know your experiment every like day or two you want to do this for a couple of weeks at a you know where you're maybe eating breakfast at 10 in the morning instead of 6 in the morning and then see how you feel if you found this video helpful make sure you click the like button if you have any comments or topics that you want us to discuss in the future, just add them in the comments below. Click the subscription here so you get notifications for any new content that we're coming out with. If you want to learn more about intermittent fasting in women, go in the descriptions and click on the link. I got gin all over my glasses. Oh.